what is happening guys? So, as you've seen by the last video, we went up and had a bit of the paint sorted out on it. And I've done now, I think about 300 miles in the van since we finished it, and it is driving like a dream. Everything we've fixed is working and there's no knocks, bangs or anything like that. But now what we want to do is try and sort out this arch gap. And yes, the rotor form wheels that I have had on the Mark V are on the Caddy. Now, these wheels were the original plan for the van from the very beginning. I just happened to win them in that competition for £1.50 a few weeks ago. And I just, I couldn't leave them sat in the side of the workshop. So I decided that we're going to chuck some tyres on. We chuck them on the Mark V and run them for a bit because they're such a nice wheel. But they're on the van. We need to sort this arch gap out. Um, I probably have to buy another set for that Mark V because they're a really nice wheel. Um, but what we're going to do is chuck some coilovers on to get this lowered. Now, there are, from what I can see, there are no how-to videos or videos explaining. I'm, I'm no expert on it. I've never lowered one of these before. But we'll give it a go. We'll bring you along for the ride and hopefully it will give people a bit more of an idea about how to lower these because the front end is simple. Front end is just normal shock that goes into a... Um, a damper that goes into the hub as normal, pinch bolts at the back, top mount, free bolts, easy enough, fitted. The rear end is a beam, so on the rear end you've got standard shocks that go on. <coughs> then you've got all of this slot. And I've also got a little forge relocation plate in there. So what we're going to do is something called flipping the beam. So at the moment, leaf spring is there, beam sits underneath the leaf spring. What we're going to do is take that beam put it on top, essentially moving the wheel up in the arch to lower the van. So first thing we need to do is jack it up, work out where we can put an axle stand. It's not gonna crush the floor and not gonna be where we need to work. Take the wheels off, start on doing bits. So let's get that GoPro on and get started. So it's the next day. I got a bit done yesterday, uh, but I was running out of time and I only really sort of wanted to get in my head to work out what you've got to do to do all of this flipping. And I've got this side mostly done. So I'm going to show you now and go through this side, show you all the parts fitted to it. And then I'll try and go through the other side and explain to you exactly what's what and how you do it. So here is all the aftermarket shackles for lowering all fitted onto this rear beam on the passenger side. So if you look at the driver's side, you can see that the leaf is on top of the beam on that flat plate. And if we look at the passenger side, the leaf is now on the bottom. So we've moved it from here down to here using these plates. Um, there's a nice little round there that puts the axle into the correct place. Now, something that you sometimes have to do is put on an axle relocation plate. Now I've been kindly sent these by Forge Motorsport. I'll put a link in the description to Forge and in specifically to these. Um, now what these do basically, which I think, looking at it, I'm going to have to do. The reason being, if I sit here, you'll be able to see. So you can see that wheel is miles forward in that rear arch. So we need to use them plates to bring that back into line. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do both sides, put it on the floor just to check it in and then we'll take it apart and put them on. They do advise fitting your suspension without them first just to check. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Now, I've not changed, I haven't changed these plates. So you get a drop plate which has got holes that comes down here to give you the adjustability on the ride height. Now, I haven't changed these. These are still the standard ones because I've had a bit of a problem with the, um, the ones that were supplied. I'd got three of one hand and one of the other hand, um, which has been sorted, they'll be here today, but I just wanted to sort of make as much progress on this as I can. So I've got most of this side done. As soon as they come, we'll change those. Now, another little thing that you need to know, which could trip you up, is... See, in the chassis here, you've got this hole. This bolt here goes all the way through. It's a captive fixing on this end, so this doesn't come off. This bolt here has got to come out. At the minute, that bolt is going to hit this. What you've got to do is undo the top shackle, so the top bolt, so this will move. Undo the front mounting point and then you can pull the whole of this section back and swing it if you like on this top point which means this will come back in line enough to both put the bolt into that hole when you've removed that bung to give you the clearance to get the bolt out so yeah if you try and do it and you can't get that bolt out that's the reason you've got to undo the front and probably the shock 
you might get away with that shot, but you've got to undo the front to be able to swing it back, be able to get that bolt out. So what I'm going to do now is go and do the other side. I'll try and explain to you and show you as much as I can undoing things, getting things off, how I've done it. Um, when that's on, we'll then come back, nip everything back up, chuck the wheels on, put it on the floor, and see if we need to put these relocation plates on. So let's jump on with that. On the driver's side then, to undo and get everything off that you need to remove, you've got at the front there, if you can see, 18 mil nut and bolt holding that end of the leaf on. At the rear, you've same as the other side, you've got these sort of shackles, you've got 18 mil bolt at the top there, 18 mil bolt there, captive nut that side, so you've just got to undo them, get them out. Same deal there with the little rubber to get them out. On top of the beam, you've got these four 18 mil bolts as well. So, I'm gonna make a start on doing all them. Then down here you've got obviously the bolt for the bottom of the shock, which I think is 18 as well. And then you've got the top one up there, which I think is a 21. So yeah, most of it's 18 I think, but the top one I think is a 21. So you don't need a lot of tools to do this. So let's make a start on that. And hopefully get it back on the floor pretty quick. Once you get the leaf out, you've got a 16mm uh, nut this side and this round bit this side. To get a pair of mole grips, don't damage it, but just grip it. Undo that and then you want to swap these round. So the round bit wants to be this side and the nut wants to be this side. And now comes the time to install these. So. What we're going to do, we'll remove all these bolts and strip this down into its components. So down to this point now, this plate goes on top of the beam. That little pin you can see on it in there goes into that hole. And locates just like that. Next piece to go on is this piece. It's got these half rounds on it. That fits on the bolts. something like that and hopefully holds itself there. Then the next thing to go on is the leaf spring. So we'll do the same again, we'll mount it into the rear shackle first and then we'll get it into the front mounting, um, locating into that pin hole with that pin. So I'll chuck the GoPro on, wrestle this in and then I'll show you the next bit. So that's mounted into this rear point, which is the same idea if you had the extra long, the long plates for the adjustment. I will be fitting those, but for the moment, I'm just gonna do this because they're not here. At the front, it's in the front point as well. All correct. At the back, we've got this pin is located in this hole that is in this. And the next plate to go on is this one, which has got this hole to get over this nut. Now, in the instructions, it does come with this here that fits in the back edge like that but it says that's only up to a 2011 van so you don't need that if you're post 2011 which this is so we don't need that so we chuck that on put the bolts on and then we'll be about the same as the other side 
So now I've got all this bolted back on and that wheel is nowhere near the center of that arch. I'm gonna fit these forge drop plates. I've dropped that plate and that plate goes on top of the leaf into the bottom of this plate here. And already you can see that is much better and much closer. So on the back of them, you've got 15 and 10. So 15 mil and 10 mil. This line is the center of the axle. And obviously the center of that and the center of that is how much you're gonna move it by. I've opted for 15, because I think it looks about right. And as you can see there, center of the plate is here. And that's where it is now. So you mount that so that the 15 mil hole is that side and the pin is further back because we want to move the axle further back in the arch. So I'm going to bolt this side up, we'll go around and chuck this plate onto the other side as well so they're the same, do everything up, swap the shocks and then we'll put it on the floor and see how it sits. So to be able to fit these relocation plates what you need to do is remove the nut off of this pin, remove the pin and that plate. Reason being you've got to put this pin into the leaf so that it doesn't protrude out the bottom because obviously now this hole that the uh, bolt, the nut would have gone through is going to be off center and is going to hit somewhere on here. So you can't use that. So you've got to knock this pin in. So I need to undo the back, drop the leaf down, hammer that in and chuck the plate on. That is the driver's side all done. We've obviously got the lowering kit fitted and we've also got this axle relocation plate. New shocks bolted in. I decided to not show that because it's bolting a shock in and if you're going to be doing this you know what you're doing already. 21 at the top, two 18s at the bottom, 18 at the front for the front leaf mount, 18 at the rear for the rear leaf mount, 18s under here, well these are 19s on these but factory they are 18s. I've just cut the bump stock down as well, now I've probably cut it down more than it needs to be but I'd rather cut it down a little bit more and yeah, not have a problem with it knocking in things. So that's this side done, I'm going to jump on and chuck the relocation plate on the other side and uh, put the new shock in. That's the rear sorted then. Actually not as difficult as I expected it to be. I expected them to be an absolute pain. The most difficult part of the whole thing on the rear, I would say, is the top shock mount. Pain in the ass to get to, it's so tight. But anyway, it's on, it's done, until I change those rear drop plates. So you've got a bit of adjustment. I have to say, I am really happy with where it's sitting. So yeah, when those plates come, We'll shut them on, hopefully get them set in the same place and it will look nice. Now, the front end. Front end is pretty simple. From what I can gather, it's mostly a pretty standard Volkswagen Audi setup up front. Um, to get the strut out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove all of the hub. I've undone the drive shaft fixing or bolt already at the minute. Just It just makes life easier. I'm trying to get it all out. So what we'll do is we've undone the hub nut. We're going to undo the lower arm fixings here. We're gonna undo the 221 mils in here and take the caliper and carrier off. We'll undo the pinch bolt in here while it's on the car. I'm gonna cut the drop link off because I've got new ones to go on. Steering arm, I've already undone that. We need to knock that out the track rod end. And then up here, you've got three 13 mil fixings that hold the top mount in. And then the whole assembly should come out and we'll be able to split it on the floor put the new shocks in. Now, next problem we've got with the front end is that this van is a 55 mil strut. So the part that sits in the hub, this bit here, is 55 mil. Now, the Volkswagen Audi group for some reason decided some vehicles with the same front setup as this, some are 50 mil, some are 55 mil. So the manufacturers have to make two different types of coilover. Now, 55 mil, out of stock everywhere. I cannot get hold of a set of 55 mils anywhere at all. So what I've gone for are these VMAX and I've gone for the 50 mil. Now, yes, they're too small, but I'm waiting for, still not turned up, some collars. I put a picture in here of the collars that I've found on the internet. And basically what that does, that's a sleeve that will go over this and I'll adapt this from 50 mil to 55 mil. Now, I imagine I'm gonna get some comments going, it's not safe, it's not safe. Companies manufacture them, they sell no end of them. I know quite a lot of people that fitted them. It won't affect the performance of these in the slightest. So that's what we're going to be doing and what we're going to be fitting into here. But I can't fit them until they arrive in the post at some time today. Fingers crossed, touch wood, hopefully. So all I can really do is strip everything off the van. Top mounts fitted to these. 
and that's pretty much all we can do until the bits turn up. So we'll start ripping this lot to pieces. It's all pretty simple and pretty standard stuff on the front end. If you've got half an idea of what you're doing, it will be obvious how to take this all apart. A lot of people don't bother taking all of the hub assembly off, but if you look in there, the lower arm there isn't going to... You're not going to get any more droop on that lower arm unless you take all the lower arm out, which in case you've still got to take the hub off, so you might as well do it. Now, this side has still got a genuine... Um, bolt and drive shaft I imagine it's the original one and you need a special I say special I think it's a 12.24 mil for that side the other side is an aftermarket one so that is a six point which I've just used a 27 mil to undo so yeah that other side well when I was swapping that drive shaft it had the original drive shaft on it still and that was what tripped me up swapping that out because I didn't have that socket but I bought myself a set Put a link in the description to the one I bought off eBay. Did a job and it works. So I'm just going to chuck the camera on the side, make start stripping this lot off, and hopefully get ourselves sorted, ready to get this sitting a little bit nicer. Building the front struts up, we've got the only part we need off of the old setup is the top mount and the bearing there, obviously, so that when you change the steering, it's a pivot point for that. <clears throat> on here, you've got this black plastic piece that's on the strut that goes inside here, like that, and there's a press fit in there, so that's that. We've got the coilover set as low as it will go, everything else is on there. Top mount on, put the nut on, do it up. So I mentioned earlier that I was using 50 mil struts and not 55 mil struts and I'd ordered some sleeves that now turned up. So these are what they are. So you've got a lip at the bottom to stop the strut going through, a slit up the middle for it to fit on. They go on, just like that, to make this now a 55 mil strut. So we've now got them, we can put them on and get the front back together. thing you're going to need to do up here to be able to access these fixings on the driver's side is remove this wiper motor now this is pretty easy to remove so those rubbers just sit up on those metal pieces like that those metal bits have got threads in t30 torque screws undo that and it comes straight off move it out of the way so you've got access easy as that so i'm going to put that back on now I've opted to use these adjustable drop links as well. So basically what I'm gonna do is set them so that I can get the drop link away from the drive shaft and down to the lower arm um, so that when it all moves, hopefully, we won't go hitting anything. And there we go then, that's the van lowered and looking a hell of a lot better. It's amazing how much of a difference lowering a vehicle makes. 
For static, it isn't sitting too bad now. It is absolutely maxed out on the setup that it's on. The coilovers are wound all the way down to the bottom and the rears are set as low as they will go as well. But I think it looks pretty good overall. I'm happy with the way it's turned out. This is the exact image with the wheels, the colour, the bumper, absolutely everything that I had in my head when I first bought that crash damage van all those months ago. So that's the build essentially complete now. It took a hell of a lot longer than I expected it to do, but I have learned a hell of a lot through this whole series. Obviously, I've not done it all on my own. I've had a massive help from a lot of other people. So I want to thank Hef for giving me all the advice on the wing mirrors and the bumper. I want to thank Jeff Cooper for giving me the advice on the dashboard. I want to thank Tony's refinishing for all of his help with the paint. I want to thank James from Spray Hub for helping me out with priming the front bumper. I want to say thank you to Dodo Matt for supplying me with all of the sand deadening and insulation. I want to say thank you to Forge Motorsport for sorting me out with the rear axle relocation plates. I want to say thank you to Indy at the Performance Co for sorting me a great deal out on the coilovers. I want to say a big thank you to to Vag Recycle for the competition I entered and won those wheels in. I want to say thanks to Andy Kelly for sorting me out with the sticker on the back window and the roof vinyl. I want to say thank you to the wife for putting up with me going on about it and spending hours and hours in the workshop sorting this out and coming home moaning. This stuff wasn't quite going to plan, but we got there in the end. So last but not least, I want to say massive thank you to all of you guys for watching, helping and supporting the channel. This is the last episode of the build, but there may be a couple more episodes on a few more bits. The next thing this needs is a real good clean, which is going to be the next episode. Right, before it starts absolutely hammering it down, we'll leave this one there then, guys. Until next time, enjoy.